Welcome back. All right, so proof of expected value for the geometric distribution. If you're gonna take the expected value, you're going to find that it is equal to R multiplied by M uh, divided by N. Now, of course, depending which textbook you pick up, which teacher you have, so these R, M, N, they could be really any um, variables that uh, someone chooses. So I've defined them here on the right. So R is the number of dependent trials that we're gonna take on. M is just the number of success elements that you have. Um, N uh, is the number of elements to choose from. So that's the total number of elements to choose from. And then um, obviously N minus M um, is going to be the number of unsuccessful elements. So we have two, we either have success or we have failure. We know how many elements we have that will give us a success. We know how many elements we have that uh, give us a failure. And again, so this R, M, N are kind of arbitrary. I, um, you know, we could have chose them differently and I'm sure their textbooks might choose them differently. So you can map it up and then change your variables as needed. Now the uh, probability, okay, so for this, so P uh, of X, um, so X is just the number of successes, uh, is um, equal to uh, M choose X multiplied by N minus M um, R, uh, sorry, uh, choose R minus X and then divided by uh, N choose R. So that is the probability. I'm not gonna go into the details um, of this probability, okay? No examples here, just the actual proof itself. Now I have uh, proven kind of the expected value for the binomial, okay, for the geometric, um, for the binomial. Actually, it's kind of helpful for this one, okay? So the binomial distribution expected value proof, I'll put that up above there just in case. And in here, um, before I get started on proving this, I want you to kind of recall a few things. So when you are um, doing combinations, so N choose R, uh, not necessarily the N and the R that we have up above there, although it can be, um, so if you have n choose r, that is equal to, so we know that that is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. And you can simplify that. You can uh, factor out the n and the r. And um, once you do that, you know, that will be actually equal to uh, n over r multiplied by n minus 1 choose uh, r minus 1. So that's going to be a useful item that we're going to need in our proof because I'm going to be using it. Okay, so here is, I've actually proven that these two are uh, equal because you can just walk yourself out through the line and then do the um, algebra. Now, another item that you should recall, okay, within here is that if we take the summation across all the probabilities for a hypergeometric uh, distribution, we know that it equals to one, all right? So here it is, so this is just a reminder, okay? This is for any, you know, I used capital R, capital M, capital N, capital R in here, because it doesn't have to be the same ones as we had above there. Um, so that is equal to one, that's just by definition, because we're summing up all the probabilities across the distribution. And that's also something that I'm gonna need um, in the proof. So I'm going to need these two particular items. So watch out for that. So now with the expected value, so by uh, definition, here it is. Okay, so my expected value is equal to the summation um, from, uh, really, it's x is equal to zero. All right, so I mean, I can put here uh, zero, because that's typically the definition. The only thing is, is that, as you know, because you have x and you're multiplying it by the probability, you know, if x is equal to zero, so it just disappears there. Um, so that term, so I typically will start it from one instead. So within here, now as we keep going, so let's take a look and see. So we know that we want this to be equal to this right here, you know, so I'm just going to copy it down and bring it down there. So let me copy it, and then I'm gonna place it right here. So this is what we want it to be equal to. So the trick that I will use is, I will actually use uh, this right here first, all right? So I'm going to uh, take, okay, so this combination, and I'm gonna take this combination as well. 
and I'm going to massage it out uh, utilizing that. So this is just uh, equal to, and let me copy this uh, down below. So let me duplicate it. And then you're gonna see what's gonna happen to those two terms. So I'm gonna remove these entirely. All right, so those are the ones that I'm working on. And what I'm going to replace them with is simply m over x, okay? And then this is gonna be m minus one, choose x minus one, okay? So that's first thing. And then I'm gonna have n over r. And um, here, this is going to be n minus one, and then r minus one right here. That doesn't change anything for us. Now, what it does do, for us is that now all of a sudden, so notice this x will cancel out this x, and I'm gonna be able to take out um, this m, this n, and this r. So I'm gonna be able to take it out out of the summation because now it follows that it's for the entire thing. So my new okay, item, so this right here, again, I'm gonna duplicate it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it down right there. Let me remove this. So with that, now gone, so this is gone, this is gone, and this M, all right, so what we're going to have is, we're going to have, so that R, so this R right here, because it's just M really all over N over R, so that is the same thing as just saying R, M over N. And you will notice that, hey, wait a minute, isn't that my expected value that I'm trying to prove? And indeed, that is the case. So with this, so this is all now removed. And let me kind of clean this up just a touch. And here, shift this over. So this is what I'm dealing with. So my ultimate goal now will be, well, can I just prove that all of this is equal to one? And indeed, it is equal to one. Now, you know, you might need a little bit of convincing to uh, to be able to do that. And, you know, so I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so with that is now, I just wanna be able to show, okay, that what I've just um, highlighted there for you really is just equal to this, all right? So it's just equal to one. So I'm gonna substitute for the variables. So I'm gonna use the particular tricks in here. Um, to make that happen. Okay, so uh, with this uh, entire thing, so what are we gonna have? So I'm gonna try to rewrite this now, and I'll try to rewrite it in full. So first of all, <clears throat> notice that this is x is equal to uh, one right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute, okay, for that x, so instead of having x, I'm gonna just set let i is equal to x minus one, all right? And then, so you'll see that. So the reason why I'm doing that is, you know, I see this x minus one over here, and that's going to change, uh, and we're gonna massage this out a little bit. So if I do that, please, of course, note that x then is equal to i um, plus one, Right, because if we can, if we bring that one over on the other side, so that's what x is equal to. So my summation, so the index is no longer x; it's going to be i, right? And if I do that, so you know, if I substitute that in here, so that's so into here, for example, I'm going to get i plus one is equal to one, and shifting that one over, so now it's going to be starting from zero. So this is now the summation. I'm gonna put it over i starting from zero. And now it's no longer to r. So you know, if x went all the way up to r, that means that, so x, which is i plus one is equal to r. So this might just give you a kind of an idea, you know, how you can change these indices because you see that sometimes in proofs. So we're going all the way up to r minus one, okay? And now what I have is, so I'm gonna you know, change this up a little bit. So this is gonna be now m minus one, um, x minus uh, one is equal to i. And then with this entire thing, let me remove this for the moment, or at least switch it out of here, make it smaller, it doesn't bug me. So for this one, 
you know, uh, this right here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of massage it out. So I'm going to make this n minus 1, all right, um, minus m minus 1, okay? And you should convince yourself right, that this is still equal to n minus m. Notice n, right, um, minus m, so that's there, and then negative 1, so minus 1. Negative and negative is positive, so that would cancel out negative 1 plus 1, so we're back to what we started. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a moment. Um, so, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to do um, r minus 1, and this is going to be minus, okay, and this is going to be now x minus 1. So that also equals the same thing, but of course, x minus 1, um, so from, sorry, from right here, okay, that's just equal to i. So instead of having this, I'm going to just make this i so that I am consistent with that. And then divided by, you know, so this is n minus 1 and r minus 1. And now, uh, so what you have is you have basically the uh, probability distribution starting from 0 going all the way up to r minus 1. And all of this is equal to, so all of this is equal to 1. Now, you might say, well, hold on a second. Aren't you going to r minus 1, and you have m minus 1, and n minus 1, and all of these different things? So that's not exactly the same as, you know, this right here. And, you know, you would be correct in saying that. But that still, okay, is equal to 1, because what you can do is, you know, you can play the trick of just simply saying that, okay, let M, so capital M, equal to M minus 1. Let capital R uh, equal to R minus 1. And then let capital N equal to N minus 1. And if you substitute, substitute all of those, okay, into this, then what you have is, all of a sudden, this becomes I is equal to, so notice, this is going to be going up to R, okay, so this is capital M, I, and then you have n minus 1, which is n minus capital M. Uh, this is capital R minus I, all over um, capital N, and then this is capital R. All right, so this indeed is equal to 1. This is just, okay, we're talking about we have Okay, the probability across R trials, and R just turns out to be R minus 1, and everything else is consistent. So now you can see that really this is exactly the same thing as this right here. Okay, so notice I even used capital M and capital N and capital R in here, so it's identical. So because this is equal to 1, now, you know, don't forget that we had factored out this, right? So if I take that, bring it down here, okay, then indeed our expected value, well, all of this junk right here is just equal to one, right? So this is equal to one. So my expected value just remains to be that. And there you go. You have proved the expected value for the hypergeometric distribution. All right, so I hope that this is uh, helpful for you so that you can walk yourself down through it. I do uh, encourage you to try to see okay, these particular little tricks okay, that you sometimes need for these proofs and you do have to do you know, a few of them to be you know, more and more um, uh, kind of accustomed to doing these. You know, sometimes if I'm away from them, you know, they kind of slip my mind. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye everybody.